Hi, this is Steve Pierce with Framework Productions, and in this season of Adorama Beyond the Sound, we're going to take you through most everything you need to know about recording live audio, working with multiple cameras at a time, lighting for a live setting, plus directing, editing, and all the post-production techniques associated with working with live events. This is Adorama Beyond the Sound. We are here today at AudioWorks in Chelsea in New York City. Uh, we are working with Framework to do the post-production mix on Beyond the Sound, which is a uh, series. We recorded three different bands, three songs per band. I was also there on set to do the tracking, and now we're mixing everything down for post. So when I'm starting with a vocal from scratch, I'm going for my basic tools, which are EQ, dynamics, reverb, and delay. What you really want to do on set is capture the sounds the best that you possibly can, and you really do want them to go into the microphone sounding great, come out of that microphone sounding great, and that has a lot to do with the microphone selection. But once we get into the post-production mix, we are doing a lot of EQ, a lot of dynamics processing to make sure that everything coalesces and congeals into a really great sounding track. And you needed a friend. A messed up and a strong-willed child No direction, no plans And you needed a friend A messed up and a strong-willed child No direction, no plans so that kick, is it possible that we can get it a little more, little less thud thud, a little more thump thump and a totally. little more boom, you know what I mean? I've got a uh, high peak here for attack on the kick. I've got a low shelf boost to give the kick some extra warmth in low end. And then I've got this one really tight low mid notch that is the fundamental frequency of the drum. So you can hear it uh, resonate if I bring it up. So right now it's really flat and dead. And if I bring it way up, that you can hear, that's the resonance of the drum. Us as audience members, as listeners, uh, we're used to a kick drum sound that is actually not an acoustic kick drum. She is just a bad girl. We're used to a processed and treated and really dolled up kick drum sound, and that's what we do with EQ and uh, dynamics processing. So when you take a drum, you know, it's a membrane, a head that resonates, and it's got one specific frequency, if it's tuned well, that resonates. And that actually gives you a lot of lower end, what we call balls on the kick drum. Um, and having the ability to bring that up and down and mix that into the track gives you a lot of control over the kick sound. So we also did a similar thing to the snare drum as we did to the kick drum. Uh, I found a fundamental frequency of the snare and pushed that into the mix. I gave it a little more top end. We adjusted the bottom end of the drum, um, but just to really make it fit within the 70s sound that the band is going for. or equalization contours the timbre of a sound. When you think about timbre, we've got four real fields of sound. We've got pitch, we've got volume, we've got timbre, and then we've got time. Uh, timbre defines the warmth of an instrument, the crispiness of it. Uh, we essentially take the spectrum of sound and we shape it to make the sound um, as natural as it can be. You've got to keep in mind that we're, we're capturing something on a microphone. A microphone is not the human ear, you know? It's just the vessel with a, an ear to how they want to sound, and even a piece of gear that is part of their style and their character. You know, that's, that's the band, that's the story. So, Tali also came with four backing vocalists and on one tune, actually an entire ensemble, entire chorus of folks. Uh, you might have a song like Plunge, which has a single backing vocalist. 
supporting Talia during the verses, and then all four backing vocalists come in during the chorus. So those verses are actually mixed very specifically to get a very specific sound in those sections, whereas the choruses get a different mix. Always felt like a good escape To protect what was left to take The illusion is fading Fading, oh it's fading out And the words that you swallow down Tickle at the back of Buke and Gaze is a further departure from these other two bands in that what they supply to us is three tracks. With them, it's really more shaping of that track and shaping of the vocal, which we do still add processing to, effects processing. Um, but using all those elements just in slightly different ways, we're able to walk out of here with a really good sounding mix. Dynamics processing is anything that has to do with uh, volume, and it can come in a lot of different forms. There can be uh, compression is the most simple form of dynamics processing. There's also multiband compression, which we do use on all the tracks to duck the instrumental track a little bit. But basically what's going on is we've got a signal, and it's what's called a dynamic signal. It's got dynamics to it. It's loud, it's quiet, it's got a lot of things in between. And we're trying to get it into a middle range where it is both natural and has a dynamic to it, uh, but at the same time, it fits within the track. Effects processing is sort of the third element to the vocal treatment, and it's for us a combination of uh, reverb and delay. Delay basically takes the sound and it uh, delays it. It creates copies of it in time that follow the original signal. And usually we do that with a tempo sync. Um, you might also think of it as an echo, uh, was probably a good way to describe it. Um, and it gives the sound a sense of three-dimensional depth without doing uh, too much color or mudding the sound the way that reverb would. Reverb really smudges the sound in a way that can both be great and also be undesirable depending on the track, depending on the song and the story and the feeling of the sound. So we use those two elements, reverb and delay, on a song-by-song -song basis to make each song sound as it really should. The only rules that I really follow when I'm doing a music mix like this is one, if it sounds good, it is good, and two, there are no rules. Because for me, that's all that this is, is storytelling, and you, I really do think that you have to have a musical mind to piece these puzzles together. There is really a spectrum of taste between uh, good and bad, too little, too much, and within that lies the musicianship and the artistry of a sound mix. <laughs> Zemir Shelah